Hello and welcome to livealittlehigher.com. We continue learning Hodot Halevavot, Duties of the Heart of Rabbi Bahia Ibn Pakuda, and we're in the gate of serving God. And today we're going to start learning about the 10 chapters of the gate of serving God. We'll do chapter 1 and chapter 2. Chapter 1 talks about rousing man. <clears throat> to God's service and the ways in which this is achieved. So we know by now that the purpose of our life is to serve God. Really, if you want to accept or not, that's the whole purpose we're in this world is to serve Hashem, is to make a dwelling place for Him in this world, to make a, an abode for Him. And the way to do it is by fulfilling the Torah, it's by doing mitzvot, it's by learning Torah and, and, and fulfilling the will of God in this world. So rousing man to God's service, how do we rouse a person to want to do this? Because we have free will, we can choose to do it or not, but we have to enlighten ourselves, we need to inspire ourselves to want to serve Hashem. So a person is obligated to serve God, uh, may he be exalted, by way of his intellect and his intelligence. So we have to, to serve him in thought, speech and action. It begins with our intellect, it begins with our thoughts and how we process information. And um, the intellect really is divided with Chokhmah Binadad, which is wisdom, understanding, and knowledge. And the, we have to serve God with our wisdom, with our understanding, and with our knowledge. And now there is a long stretch of time between the moment he's, he first enjoys God's graces and the moment he's intelligent enough to recognize the depth of service that he owes for these graces. Like, some people, they just assume that life is the way it is. And they have like entitlement issues and they feel they deserve. And in reality, you need your in intelligence, you need your intellect to come to, to understand that you don't deserve anything, you're not entitled to anything. Everything that Hashem gives you is really a privilege. And that we have to be grateful for everything that we have. And But for this, we need to be intelligent. We need to be able to recognize this truth. And there are two forms of stimulus. There's two ways to stimulate ourselves. And one is embedded in the mind, implanted in man's consciousness. It is an innate and natural part of him from the beginning of his creation. So we are an emanation of God. We have a spark of God inside of us. So it's natural. It's natural that a person wants to serve Hashem. It's unnatural that a person doesn't want to serve Hashem. So the natural part of ourselves, what's innate in us, yes, we want to eat kosher. Yes, we want to keep Shabbat. Yes, we want to serve God. But it's innate. And the part that we don't want to is not our innate part. It's really not a natural part of ourselves that is inside of us. But it's not the natural part of ourselves. So the other is acquired by way of tradition, the Torah, which was delivered by the prophet uh, Moses to mankind in order to show them the way of service owed to the Creator, may He be exalted. So one is an innate way that we just feel it. It's it's called a connection from our soul to God. It's part of our parts of ourselves is Hashem. So when really you're serving God, when you're doing Hashem's will, He's doing your will too because it, your this is your essence. This is who you really are. So. The other part is that we need to learn Torah. It needs to come from an external place. Tradition, the Torah, all these things that are incorporated into our lives that allow us and help us and give us an extra boost to be able to serve Hashem. And the second uh, <clears throat> reason, both these forms of stimulus as necessary is as follows. Because the stimulus embedded in the mind is deficient from three aspects, we must reinforce it with the stimulus provided by the Torah. So, as good as Hashem made us, we're not so perfect. And the mind sometimes plays tricks on us. They, we can come to justify every sin under the sun with our minds. We can intellectually justify everything. So what it's telling us here that we cannot uh, only rely on our intelligence, we have to also connect to the Torah, because the Torah is emet, is the truth, is, is, is Hashem's will, this is what God wants from us, it's a guide to life, so when we learn Torah, what we're doing is we're learning what Hashem wants from us, and uh, it's very important to be able to connect to this part, so 
So it says man was created from a dissimilar parts, conflicting natural, natural qualities, like we have a divine soul that is completely divine, has no ego, is completely nullified for Hashem. And we have another part of us that is egocentric, is animalistic, is instinctive, me, 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 me. And we have this dichotomy inside of us that is a battle, a constant battle every day. So the creator has implanted, implanted in his soul traits and drives that make him yearn for things which him, when made a part of his lifestyle, develop his body and give him strength to populate the earth in order that the race may continue with individual, individuals will, will perish. So Hashem gave us pleasure. He gave us things that give us pleasure that really we want to do because they give us pleasure. But this pleasure that was created within us is really to connect to God, but it's, it's a double-edged sword. So when we are, st are stimulated by the external world, by the material world, then it can become very dangerous because we acquire the pleasure from the wrong place. So for example, Hashem gave us a pleasure in procreating. It's something that's very pleasurable. People, this is their drive in life. So they have a lot of pleasure from it. And Hashem wants it to be that way because if not, people would not have more kids. Like people would not be doing what they need to be doing to have babies. So he created an enorm enormous pleasure to be able to populate the world. But in reality, it is so we bring holy neshamas to the world to do it in the right context, in the context of marriage, in a context where there's a holiness, where there's kedusha, where you're educating your kids in the right way, with the right values. This is the right way to do it. But people, when they are not connected to the truth, when they're not connected to the Torah, then they take this pleasure and they use it in the wrong way. So the Creator, may He be exalted, has also incorporated in man's soul other qualities and powers. With this He longs for which things that will, br will bring Him um, a desire to leave the world. So we also have pleasure from the spiritual world. There's people that just want to live in a mountain and have a nirvana all day because it's very pleasurable to be in, in, a, in a constant spiritual high. And, and sadly, many people today, they do, they do drugs, they do things that will take them out of their physical reality so they can be experiencing a spiritual high all day and be numb to the world. But this is not what Hashem wants. He wants us to be part of this world. He wants us to be here. He wants us to elevate this world, to serve Him in this world. This is what He wants. But He has to give us this feelings so we're able to do it. The problem is that when we don't use them in the right way, then we do the wrong thing. So it says here, since bodily pleasures come to a man's souls first, from earliest childhood, since his attachment to them is strong from the very beginning and he grows accustomed to them, this desire for sensual pleasure overcomes all his other qualities and even becomes, it even overcomes his intellect. So for this reason, man needs to help the help of some external factor. And this external factor really is the Torah, because the Torah is what gives us our, the, the noblest part of, of all of these, these factors. Like, it's not bad that you feel pleasure, but you have to feel it in the right context. You cannot be fooling around in the world with a wife, with kids, and be having pleasure in other places. This is not what the Torah uh, intended it to be. This is not why Hashem created it. So here we see that the second of these aspects is that the intellect is a spiritual element. Our, our intelligence comes from a, an, a spiritual place deriving from the highest spiritual world and it is a stranger in this world and gross material bodies. Man's physical desire, however, is the product of natural forces and a combination of elements. So it is at home here in this world, which is the foundation and place of origin, foods that vitalize the body, it gives pleasure to our senses, to our sight, to our smell, to our taste. It, the intellect, on the other hand, because it is a stranger here in this world, has nothing to strengthen it, and there is nothing like it. All are against it. So the, the, everything that is the body is part of this world. 
and it derives tremendous pleasure from the world. Everything that is from the intelligence is from a spiritual realm. So it, it's like an alien in this world. It doesn't belong here. And the, the Torah is the cure for this malady, for such sickness of the soul and diseases of personality. So the Torah is what bridges the spiritual with the material. It's what brings heaven down to earth. It's where it, it channels the spiritual, the intellectual part of a human being to go in the right direction and the bodily pleasurable desires to also channel them to go in a holy way. So in that way, a person can become balanced. You will therefore find that the Torah prohibits many kinds of foods, like a Jew, we're not allowed to eat shrimp, we're not allowed to eat pig, we're, we can't mix milk and meat. There's, if you eat uh, meat, you have to wait six hours to drink milk. All these things that the, the Torah uh, commands us and in our personal relationships, uh, in how what is a holy relationship and what's not a holy relationship what it does it, it strengthens the physical desire it also prescribes those things that are antithetical to physical desire and that inhibit it namely prayer fasting charity and loving kindness which receive the signs of intellect enlightenment both in this world and in the next world so the torah what it does is that is like a lamp in our lives that lights the way it's like when you're walking in a, in, a, in a road and it's dark and there's no light, you might fall. You don't know where you're going. Maybe you take a wrong turn. But if there's a light that is guiding you, then it's much, much easier to be able to fulfill the purpose for which you were created. So the third aspect is as follows. Physical desire is constantly engaged in nourishing the body. Like it's all about the body. What makes you feel good? And the mind, on the other hand, is used only to complement the gratification of the body. So now it is well known that when the organs of the body are used steadily, in a natural way, their condition improves and they function better. When a person lives um, a healthy life in, in, in mind, in body, and in soul, when there's an alignment in these three, in these three uh, parts of us, then the body is going to function healthy. Everything, your organs, everything is going to be functioning in a much better way. So the necessary consequences of this is that physical desire grows strong because it is exercised constantly. This world is, is desire, 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 physicality, physicality. You go into the street and you have all these billboards, buy me, buy me, be happy. All these things are exercised continuously. You're all day bombarded with these things. So the, the physical desires are constantly exercised. It's like the muscle in the, in the, you go every day and you do lift the weights, the muscle is strong and beautiful. But what happens is the, the, the spiritual part, the intellect is not exercised as it is the, the, the physical. Like you really have to sit down and learn. You have to sit and make an effort and sit and take a book and learn. And, and, and it's not something that you go into the street and it's bombarding you all the way. And so that's why the Torah is perfect. It's God's Torah is perfect. And that's why Hashem commands us to learn Torah every day. Because this is what we need. We need a constant um, exercise for the brain too. We cannot only be exercising our physicality. We need to exercise also our spirituality. So the, the Hashem says that the <clears throat> God's Torah is perfect, restoring the soul. God's testimony is sure, making wise the simple. God's pre precepts are just, rejoicing the heart. God's commandment is pure, enlightening the eyes. This comes from, from the healing. So this, what we learn here is the ultimate purpose for which the human species was created in the world is to, for, to serve Hashem in the physical, in the spiritual. We have to serve Him in every way. So I leave you here. I wish you a blessed week. And remember, live a little higher. Thank you.